Okay. Uh, good morning. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Middleway. Uh, we're glad you're with us this morning uh, for this um, uh, Epiphany 2, Holy Eucharist with uh, Spiritual Communion. I uh, would like to thank all of the congregation. Uh, my understanding from the treasurer is we got a 100% uh, return of the pledges for this year. So we'd like to thank all of you for that. Uh, and with that, we will start with the prelude. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy, immortal one, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord God called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know, yet know the Lord, and he, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up, and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house 
from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me that all, of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 139, found on page 794 of the prayer book. And we'll say it together and end with the refrain. We'll say verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. The second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I, therefore, take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were brought with, bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Good morning. You may notice we're doing a little different today instead of me doing everything from up there. Try to get back to some semblance of normal where we preach from the uh, pulpit and do the Eucharist from up there and uh, some of the things we normally do. God is calling. God has been calling. And all of our texts today indicates that God is calling. He's calling you, and He is calling me. And the question becomes, are we listening? And if we are listening, are we willing to respond to that call? With the same words that we heard Samuel, Here I am, Lord. Now, in our Old Testament reading today, God calls Samuel not just once, but if you were listening, four times. In other words, God does not give up when he calls. And I can attest to that. He does not stop calling until you respond. God doesn't give up calling us. Even if you don't realize you're being called by God, God isn't going to stop. I mean, we're talking about God here, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things seen and unseen. When the creator of all decides that he needs you, he's not going to just stop. I mean, don't think for a minute that God's going to back down because you throw up some kind of excuse because Yo, my life is really busy right now, Lord. I I just don't have time. There's just too much going on in my life right now. Now, it's not that God doesn't care about our interests or our happiness. In fact, He does have that in mind. You and I just don't realize the joy that we will find when we respond to God's call. Regardless of the troubles that may come with the call, The amount of joy found in the service to the Lord cannot be equated by those things that the world offers. The joy in the Lord is quite different. And the psalmist today, the psalmist tells us that God knows everything about us. The psalmist says, Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You press upon me before and behind, and I am marvelously made, and I thank you. When God calls us, just like Samuel, God is going to be pushing and pulling. God's going to be pushing you from the front, pulling you from behind, from the back and all sides. God knows us. God knows what we are 
capable of. God knows our determination. God gave us all of our abilities. And we were given those abilities just not for, say, our uh, vocation in the secular world. Of course, we have to be able to work. We have to be able to eat and have a place to live and all those things. But God also gave us those abilities to do the work that God calls us to do. We know that God is at work in the world. and God works in the world in ways beyond what we might normally think of as miracles or those miraculous events that we see that can only be attributed to God. God is doing works in the world every day through people like you and people like me, working through those who have heard God's call and responded with, Here I am, Lord. What would you have me do? Now, in our gospel today from John, it's also a call, just as it was to those early disciples. We hear Jesus saying to Philip, follow me. And he did. Follow me. That's all it took was two simple words to change a life. And one changed life leads to the changing of other lives that that one touches. I mean, it's something. It's, it's, it's really backwards when we think of the way we try to get people or draw people in to our Christian faith. I mean, think about how you or I may witness to people to try to introduce Jesus to them. It's a little bit different from the way that Jesus recruited his disciples. I mean, Jesus didn't say, Hey, here's the Scriptures. I need you to read through all these Scriptures and uh, study some theology a little bit and, and really get to know me through these readings. And then when you think you know me, then I want you to tell me just how much you love me and then tell me what it's like to love me and, you know, just all this kind of stuff. And after that, you can follow me. No. What Jesus said was much simpler And in a way, a little more difficult when he said, follow me, follow me. Jesus calls us today with those same words, follow me. But how do we respond? And this is important because it it goes to what it really means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple does more than just study the Word. Yes, it's important as disciples of Christ that we study the Word and we know God's Word. But a disciple is one who actually lives with the teacher. Jesus asked Philip to come and live with him. Being a disciple of Christ means that we are, that we live with Christ every day, every night, 24-7, we are with Christ. And what does that mean? It means we allow Christ to reside in our hearts, in our mind, in our soul, as we hear that type of description in Scripture, that we are consumed by Christ. And just like we heard in the epistle today, that our body is a temple for the Holy Spirit to reside in. By living with Christ, we walk with Him. We allow Christ to guide our path. We allow Christ to guide our words, guide our actions. We are indeed living with the teacher. And people will know that we are Christians by the way we talk, the way we act. And those actions do more to bring people to the Christian faith than words do. And there are a variety of reasons why people come to our faith and come to the church. It can be when we invite family and friends to come and see. Come and see, as we heard in the Scripture today. And it could be just that somebody stumbles across the threshold because they're looking to fill a void in their lives, a void in their heart that can only be filled by Christ. But it doesn't matter how we find or are found by Christ. What matters is that once we have been found, that our goal is to spend our life in the presence of Christ. 
Again, this is what disciples of Christ do. We spend our lives in the presence of the teacher. And once we become that disciple of Christ, as I mentioned earlier, our lives change. Our lives become a testament to Christ. And through that change, we minister to others and change others' lives. It's just like when we do a candlelight service, usually on a Christmas Eve, and we start with the lights down low, and one candle is lit. And then from that candle, the light is passed from one to another till the light fills the lives in here. Lives are changed. Lives are saved. And in my study this week, I was reading about a group of Episcopalians. I think it was in New York. And I believe that each day they would study the Word. And then at the end, they would ask themselves a couple questions. And I'll give you those questions in in just a second. But if you read, and, and I really, I hope all of you do read each day. In fact, I know uh, members of Grace in your uh, envelopes that we send out, uh, Bill White always includes a copy of the forward movement day by day. And each day, right from our daily office lectionary, you will have your Old Testament, your psalm, your epistle, and a gospel reading. Now, you'll have to have a Bible with you because it'll just tell you what to read. And there's a small story. But after you read that, and in fact, anybody who's not a member, if, for, if you would like a forward day by day, and we may have some left over, text us, email us, whatever, I'll gladly send you one. But after you read that gospel each day, ask yourself just a couple questions. What exactly is Jesus saying to me in this reading today? What is the gospel saying to me? And then, what am I to do? How do I respond to that reading? So you reflect, when you do that reflection, you are essentially saying to the Lord, here I am. What do you want me to do? Our gospel today tells us and calls us to follow Christ, to spend time with the teacher, to do ministry, to do mission. And when we do, we will see signs and wonders. And when we think we have really seen something amazing, I think back to what Christ did say to Nathaniel. You will see greater things than these. You thought that was something? Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened up and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And that last thing that we hear from the Lord today harkens back to Jacob when he wrestled with the Lord. And then he saw the ladder and the angels ascending and descending. And descending. And he knew that he had found the door to heaven, the gate to heaven. But in this scripture today, Jesus is telling the disciples then and there, He is the door. He is the way. Follow Him. He beckons us today. Follow me. Follow me and your life will change forever. Follow me and through your life changing, other lives will be changed. Lives will be saved. So, Let us go forth this week. Be open to the call. Respond, here I am, Lord. Here I am. And tell others, come and see. Amen. If you will, uh, when you're on the screen, you will see the uh, Nicene Creed. And let us uh, repeat the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 6, and you'll find it again on the screen. I've had some that have sent me prayer requests uh, via text, and if anybody out there would like to add us to add names, uh, please feel free to type them in the text, uh, and I will lift them up. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mike, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, those on our prayer request list, Mag and Ed, Kaylee Rose, Lynn, Mary Ellen, Stanley, Haley, Leslie, Nancy, Mary, Sandy, Mark, Carolyn, Bianca, Linda, Raymond, Ann and Warren, Eamon, Philip, Bill, Mark, Terry, Nancy and family, Carrie Beth, Lonnie, Barbara, Brady, Diana, Lorraine, Bruce, Wendell, Elizabeth, Ralph, Crystal, Honey, Kim, Jimmy, Dennis, Carolyn, the Reverend Canon Mark Seitz, Glenn, Debbie, and Susan, and their mothers that are in <clears throat> ICU with covid and we remember all those suffering from COVID. Victims of natural disasters, our service members at home and abroad, and Christians around the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Mark, St. Albans, and the Reverend Charles Pope. In our companion diocese in Colombia, and the Reverend Julio Salazar, Mission San Juan Bautista. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray, all, we pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
And I'm sure you all hit me back with peace as well, and I thank you. One second here. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite you to a spiritual communion. Receive into your heart and into your soul the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and keep you in everlasting life. Join me in the prayer. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I will remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And the continual prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.